In this episode, we travel with Jeep Great Stories through twisting canyons on a trail brimming with ancient history, searching for old ghost towns, and spectacular views of the rugged, remote backcountry of central Utah. Episode 68 of Far From Ordinary starts now. Thompson Springs, Utah. Population 99. Once upon a time, this town was teeming with life, and so was the mining camp located in the canyon just north of town. Today, we're on a mission to find the old mining town and to hopefully gain some insight into the lives of the people that once lived here. Not all of the wheeling in Moab has to be at the possibly break your vehicle type of pace. There's an abundancy of lesser known, not often traveled trails that are perfect for most any stock vehicle looking for a day of adventure. This is a great example of one of those trails. There aren't any obstacles, just a chill drive with beautiful scenery and as you'll see later, a rich history. After lunch at Doug's Point, it was time to continue our journey. From here, we would make our way back out onto the trail and into the ghost town of Sego. But before arriving at Sego, we stumbled across a small cemetery located just south of town. Mm -hmm. 
It's hard to imagine the life that these people endured. There are whole families buried here, including migrants and infants. There's evidence that people have been in and around this area for the last 4,000 years. Pictographs and petroglyphs tell stories and are easily found throughout the canyon here. Just up the road, the remnants of the town of Sego, slowly being reclaimed by nature. In the 1890s, a man named Henry Ballard discovered coal and began buying up the land. He sold it to a group of investors in 1911, at which point they started to put money into the town's infrastructure, naming it Neslin. But by 1916, the investors weren't happy with the profits, so they fired the general manager, Richard Neslin, and renamed the town to Sego. The town did well for a number of years, but they immediately ran into issues with the water supply. In 1947, the mine was closed and the property was sold at auction. By that time, only 27 miners were left, many of whom had worked at the mine for decades. They pulled their money together and were able to purchase the mine and equipment. The town was on its way to becoming revitalized, but repeated fires and floods slowed progress to a halt. Then in the 1950s, the railroad began using diesel engines, replacing the coal-powered steam engines, eliminating the need for coal. The mine was once again shut down, this time for good. In 1955, the area was sold to a group of Texas investors who were more interested in the land. For several decades thereafter, many homes and buildings remained, but in 1973, not a flood or fire, but people destroyed most of what was left. On that day, two carloads of treasure hunters were seen with metal detectors. When they were done, it was reported that many of the buildings lay in smoldering ruins. It's truly heartbreaking that greed, not nature, destroyed what was left of this old mining town. After visiting the town of Sego, we would make our way north into Sego Canyon. At this point, you're basically following a canyon wash and isn't the kind of place that you want to be in if there's any rain in the area. With bad weather rolling in and with snow starting to fall, we continued our journey. climbed slowly but steadily several thousand feet up to an elevation of 8,000 feet. Here marks the end of our journey as the road crosses over into the Ute Reservation.
It's truly amazing that a single trail could hold so much diversity. And today, we're thankful that we were able to spend this time with friends. As we made our way out, I began to think of Henry Ballard and the endless miles that he must have walked exploring these old canyons. And here we are, possibly retracing his old footsteps, exploring the same areas that he once did 130 years later. <laughs>